This case study from Dr. Jenna White highlights the utility of pre-hospital cardiac ultrasound. Dr. White is an associate professor at the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of New Mexico. EMS was dispatched to the home of a 46-year-old female. Patient's husband called 911 because his wife was experiencing shortness of breath and he was having difficulty rousing her. He described her as being lethargic for the last day or two. Patient has a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency, and prior pulmonary emboli necessitating the placement of an inferior vena cava filter. The paramedics arrived to find the patient in a semi-upright position. The patient was responsive to verbal stimuli. Respirations were labored. Bradycardia with a rate of 45 beats per minute. Blood pressure was normal. Oxygen sat was 85% on her home administration unit at 2 liters per minute. There were diffuse crackles heard with lung auscultation. As the MS crew transferred the patient out to the ambulance, she became unresponsive, pulseless, and apneic. The MS crew lowered her to the ground and immediately began performing chest compressions. The initial cardiac rhythm determined to be PEA with narrow complex QRS intervals at the rate of 60 per minute. The patient's airway was secured with a laryngeal mask airway device and her initial end tidal CO2 was 35. Ventilations were assisted through the airway device. An IO line was placed in the patient's proximal left tibia. Epinephrine was administered through the IO. Chest compressions continued. At the next pulse and cardiac rhythm check, the patient was found to have ongoing PEA, but the rate of narrow complex QRS intervals had increased to 115 per minute. Also noted an increase in the patient's end tidal CO2 reading up to 70. The MS crew deployed the Lumify ultrasound device and obtained a subcostal view of the heart that demonstrated organized mechanical cardiac activity. Using the REACTS feature on Lumify, the on scene paramedic connected with an EMS physician. The paramedic described the incident and relayed information regarding the patient's condition to the EMS physician. Using REACTS, the EMS physician was able to visualize the patient, the scene, and the cardiac monitor. The cardiac transducer was again placed in the sub xiphoid view by the paramedic, and an excellent view of the heart was obtained. Using REACTS, the live ultrasound was shared with the EMS physician, allowing her to visualize the image the paramedic was seeing. Given the increase in the end tidal CO2, the increase in the rate of PEA, and the sonographic demonstration of what appeared to be organized mechanical activity, the EMS physician recommended that the paramedic treat these findings as equivalent to the return of spontaneous circulation. Chest compressions were stopped, a norepinephrine vasopressor infusion was started, and was rapidly titrated up during transport. Within minutes, palpable central pulses were present. A 12-lead ECG was obtained, which revealed sinus tachycardia with no apparent ischemic changes. The patient was transported to the hospital, where a chest X-ray demonstrated a multifocal pneumonia. The patient was started on broad-spectrum antibiotics, intubated, and admitted to the ICU. Over several days, the patient was weaned off vasopressor circulatory support and off the ventilator and ultimately extubated. The patient continued to improve and was discharged home after seven days. At discharge, the patient was at her neurological baseline with no apparent new neurological deficits. This case emphasizes the utility of pre-hospital cardiac ultrasound to assess the mechanical function of the heart and to determine if sonographically evident mechanical cardiac activity is robust enough to be considered a ROSC equivalent in a patient recently in cardiac arrest. Clear demonstration of organized mechanical cardiac activity using pre-hospital ultrasound in concert with other reassuring clinical factors was compelling enough to warrant cessation of chest compressions and the initiation of vasopressor therapy for presumed vasoplegia. Patient was urgently transported to the hospital for definitive care and ultimately achieved an excellent neurological recovery. In this case, the application of POCUS in the pre-hospital setting clearly impacted clinical decision-making and very likely patient outcome. Thank you to Dr. Jenna White for this excellent case study.